Oh, yes. <laughs>Hey guys, welcome to Podcast vs. Play episode 56. I'm Cal, and as always, I'm joined by a man who, during his life as a Pokemon trainer, was arrested whilst using a public toilet. It was all your fault, though, because you grasped him in for taking a Pikachu. It's only Dan. It wasn't quite as good as you hyped it up to be. Wap, wap, wap. Yeah. <laughs> it was there. It was, it was the foundations. Yeah. Anyway, you're all right, Dan. Yeah, good. You? Happy Easter. Yeah, right. Next. That's my response. Yeah. Jesus is summer. Yeah, chocolate. Come on. Jesus is chocolate day. Right, do you want some news? <laughs> yeah, fucking it's steer not, it back on track. Come it's on. not Easter related. Oh, thank Christ. Um, yet more delays, Dan. Yay! Let me guess, let me guess. What could it be this time? Hmm, delays. Battlefront, maybe? No. That's Ooh. on track. Oh, thank fucking Christ for that. Up to yet. Uh, GTA? No. Oh, okay then. Hmm, getting tricky. I'm gonna say. Well, actually, I don't know. Quantum Break. I don't care. I do. Um, Quantum Break has been delayed into 2016. However, Dan, a bonus point, because we'll keep a track of points apparently, um, if you can guess why. Um, This is an Xbox One exclusive, isn't it? It is indeed. Okay, so I'm going to say whoever's making it decided they don't just want to do it on Xbox One. No, that's not the case. <laughs> no points for you, Dan. The point is, the point is, the reason is, um, it's not anything to do with development issues or anything like that. It's because of marketing. <laughs> Quote, with so many Xbox One games launching this year, moving Quantum Break into 2016 extends our incredible portfolio into next year with a monster new IP, said Shannon Lotus, head of publishing at Microsoft Studios. What this means is, because Microsoft is releasing Halo 5 Guardians on October 27th, we don't want to crowd our own market. So, because of Halo, we don't get to play Quantum Break. Right, so they're saying that they've got so many games coming out in 2015 that they're going to yeah. wait until 2016 so they at least have one game in 2016 that's going to be good. Yeah, essentially. Okay, so for 2015, they basically said the only good game that's coming out... Is Halo. <laughs> ...is Halo 5. <laughs> so we can't have two good games in one year. That would be completely counterproductive. So instead, we're going to release Quantum Break in 2016 so we at least have one good game, See, one possibly good game in 2016. I, I get the point I'm saying, all right, Halo's probably going to sell a lot more... The Quantum Break, because Quantum Break's a new IP, you know, people may wait a bit, etc. So release Halo, and then release Quantum Break a little bit after. Don't wait until next year. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, a couple of months, and it is 2016, so it depends on what quarter 2016 they're actually planning on. Well, aim for Christmas. What have they got coming out for Christmas? Well, by then, it'll be um, DLC for Halo 5, I assume. <laughs> yeah, that'll be Christmas kids. <laughs> yeah, now an extra map. Here's a map and an extra skin for your gun. Yeah, well done. Fantastic. Or a new Call of Duty, maybe, that will be out by that point. Yeah, Call of Duty Christmas edition. Do you reckon they should elves. do, uh, like, Call of Duty Wild West? Wouldn't that just be, like, Call of Juarez and stuff? Yeah. That's essentially Call of Duty in, in, the, in the Wild West. Well, you know, they've gone World War II, they've done the modern day, they've done a little bit into the future, and now they've done Advanced Warfare, which is like 40 years into the future or something. So, unless they're going to go into space, they've got to go back again. So they've got Should to go, do... go back and do World War II or World War I, because they've done Vietnam, they've done... Um... They, should, they should do, like, Samurais and Ninjas. Yeah, I don't think that really works with first-person shooters. That'd be ace. No, I don't like first-person melee stuff. I don't know, it turns out okay, yeah, like Dishonored was really good. Mm. I did use the pistol a lot of the time. What? No yeah. way. Just just nailing headshots from miles away. Ah. Oh, you don't play it properly, man. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um game streaming service on live has shut down and Sony has bought it all. Yeah, I saw that. Um on live one of the industry's early attempts at cracking the game streaming nut. Will cease its game service later this month. No subscriptions will be renewed after this week, and refunds will be made to anyone who renewed theirs after March 28th. The service will remain active until April 30th. Quote 
Following the termination of the company's services and related products, OnLive will engage in an orderly wind down of the company and cease operations. I don't get why they've done this though. <laughs> well, one thing I did see about it is that um, Sony bought them for an undisclosed amount, which means yeah. I reckon they just gave a huge sum of money and just said, we're doing this ourselves. We don't want you being a third party that well, you know, people are interested in instead. Back when OnLive was actually a, a, a used service, I mean, I actually used OnLive a couple of times, um, but back then, their competitor was uh, Geiki, and Sony bought those for like 380 million in 2012. Um, and they were essentially the same service they offered game streaming, like you'd pay like a subscription fee, you could stream whatever games you wanted. Um, and Sony bought those, and now they've got on live, and PlayStation Now is launching soon. Yeah, they're just taking out the competition. So they were taking out the competition, or they are basically increasing their, like the like the tech side of it because obviously they've been both these companies have been doing this for a number of years maybe I mean maybe they're just buying the subscriptions because obviously people who have already subscribed to both those services um, and people who watch them on both those services um, they would just get integrated into the PlayStation Now system which means they've automatically got so many subscribers maybe yeah makes sense yeah um, plus they are more likely to use something like PlayStation Now if they've been using like Gaiki and on live already true I mean as long as they're keeping the same features and integrating just PlayStation um, features of their own then mm. you know people who use the services really aren't going to be they're probably going to no- not going to notice to be honest but you know if people say well no I don't want to go with Sony I wanted to stay with on live may just de- uh, you know cancel their subscription out of some kind of weird you know loyalty yeah. yeah but you know if, if you've made a service successful Sony you've come along and said we'll give you 20 million dollars and we're going to take it off you and you just go yeah fair enough see you in a bit oh yeah makes sense I would I, I, I know a handful of people would do it because well more than a handful like you say just because Sony's bought it and people are stupid <laughs> if it offers the same service may as well just carry on paying for it if Netflix was bought by somebody and it carried on exactly the same, it just changed the name. Yeah, people would probably go fuck it. I don't want that anymore. Yeah, I preferred it as e- it was. Even though, it, yeah, even though it's exactly the same, but or maybe even improved upon. Yeah. So it's it swings in roundabouts, but at the same time, this kind of service only really appeals to people with decent internet. True. Yeah. So well, I don't really give a shit to be honest. <laughs> I'm not going to use it. It's interesting news, but not relevant to us, I don't think. No. Well, certainly um, not to me, but... What is pretty relevant to us, Dan, is a um, Bioshock kind of remake-ish thing. Well, it's a fan maze uh, example as to what the original Bioshock would look like running on today's CryEngine. Mm. And it's pretty fucking good. It looks amazing. <laughs> I, mean, it is, I mean, it looks better than Infinite. Yeah. On PC. Easily. I mean, I, I run Infinite on Ultra. And All right, boasty McBoast. All right, calm down. <laughs> and, you know, although I was just like, wow, you know, when you go out into Colombia for the first time, you know, you see the clouds and all the cities floating about and stuff, you're just like, this looks amazing. It, I don't know, there's like, there's other things that I've played which were released before or, you know, around the same sort of time. And it, I'll, I've said it before and I'll say it again, Metro. I I, st- be- I still think that is my my bar for what I judge things by graphically Gra- wise. Graphics aside, I still think Bioshock Two looks better than Infinite, purely just because of like the aesthetics and stuff. Um, I mean, Infinite's gorgeous. No matter what system you play on it, it's good looking on 360, on uh, PlayStation Three, on PC. It just looked amazing. But I I, ju- I still prefer like the underwatery. Aesthetics of Bioshock One and Two. Yeah, I mean when when they, um, you know, there's an actually a bit when you do go down to Rapture, and there's a, a few uh, DLC episodes that I've still yet to buy, but I will eventually. Mm. Uh, where you return to Rapture, so it's basically the infinite, um, you know, physics engine and graphics and stuff. Yeah. But in the original city of Bioshock, which is you know like what 2005, six, I want to say. Uh, nine, I think, was um, the first Bioshock. Two thousand nine. Wow, I thought it was yeah. older than that. But either, either way, you know, you, I go and play it on. Uh, the next two thousand and seven. Two thousand 
2007, sorry. Yeah, so it's still, you know, eight years old. Mm. And it hasn't particularly aged well, but it's got a, a look to it and a feel and a theme to it that's just, oh, I, I don't know what it is. You, it's just instantly recognisable. And I, I think you mm. can be forgiven on that. You know, it's like, well, it hasn't aged well, but it still looks good for its for what it is. Um, I'll be honest, Bioshock 1 hasn't aged horribly well. Uh, it hasn't aged horribly bad, sorry. Um, they did the iOS remake, well, port, sorry. Um, I don't know whether it's just because of the smaller screen that it's running on, but it, it does look really good. Yeah, well, I'm hoping that this video will inspire people to make, you know, full levels or, you know, even inspire the developers 2K to, to sort of say, maybe we can cash on on all this remaking nonsense and uh, go back, remake 1 and 2 using brand new, you know, engines and things mm. and uh, re-release the whole thing as a big triple pack. They, to be fair, they wouldn't even have to do much with Infinite, just upscale it slightly. Yeah, yeah probably. Uh, maybe run it through the newer engine, but I, I, I wouldn't be that bothered if they, if they remade one and two, and just gave Infinite as it is. Maybe in in the same sort of way that they did with um, Halo. Yeah. So you know, yeah. sort of keep Halo Four pretty much as it is, but just re remaster the original ones. It may work. I mean, like like we said on on the on the podcast where we we're talking about the Master Chief Collection, Halo One isn't a remake. Um, well, it is technically, but it's an older remake that already happened for PC. Yeah. Um, but it's st it still looks shit loads better than the original. Um, and then 2 to 4 was remade. Yeah. And uh, they look good though. Look really good. Yeah. However, Dan, would you like to see some new Super Smash Bros. characters? I really don't care. Oh, and I thought you might say that. But this is quite interesting nonetheless. Okay. <laughs> um, Nintendo asked um, on Twitter, um, which links to their website. Um, and it was a poll for who you want to see as DLC characters for um, for Super Smash Bros. on Wii U and 3DS. Okay. One point, if you can guess, who replied to said tweet? You? No. Uh. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> that's not the answer. <laughs> um, Christ. I don't know. Who uses Twitter? Um, I don't know. There's only about a billion people. <laughs> uh, fucking hell. Um, Kojima, maybe? No, but you was on the right tracks. Okay. Um, Microsoft Xbox boss Phil Spencer. Hey, good old Phil. Uh, saying he would like Banjo from Banjo-Kazooie. Not a bad idea. Who owns Banjo? Hmm. Phil Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there was a lot of rigmarole well going around Twitter from it. Um, Spencer said, quote, it would be cool. And uh, Microsoft have worked together before, so there'd be no licensing issues. I'd like it. So I think it would be, yeah, it'd be a good it. little addition, yeah. And if all went well, that's pretty good advertising for Microsoft's character, i.e. Banjo, which means we may get a Banjo-Kazooie game after Yeah, it does enough hype about it, yeah. Yeah, well, people who did it, they'd go mental for it. Yeah. I'd love Banjo. Plus, he'd be a good character anyway. He's a fucking bear. <laughs> True, but you know, if you're going back down the the sort of the original N64 route, you know, conquer, um, get maybe, or what even Crash Who? Bandicoot. They also know Crash Bandicoot would be a little bit harder. It's been attacking everything. Um, be brilliant. No, it, like licensing wise. Yeah, well, plus there hasn't been a the Crash the... game made for years. Well, no, but because he was primarily a Sony game. Uh, Crash Bandicoot and Sony themselves couldn't get the rights to use Crash in um, All Stars so it'd be unlikely that Nintendo or Microsoft could get the rights yeah. so, but that, that, I think Crash would have been a good addition to both All Stars and Smash Bros mm, definitely yeah. really good and Rayman actually Rayman would be quite good yeah maybe yeah he's got his big fist yeah there. shit man there's so many characters I know yeah <laughs> Um, Mewtwo has been announced though as DLC, Excellent. more Pokemon, um, which I disagree definitely. with, because Mewtwo was a unlockable character in Melee. Well, it doesn't. It's so, so what? They use the same characters from all the games. It doesn't make any difference as to whether they're reused. No, because this means I've got to pay for it this oh, time. Oh right. 
Whereas he should have just been in the roster from the start for this one. Mm, maybe. I guess show out Charizard, I bother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, Dan, the main story this week. Did you know Microsoft considered making the original Xbox and giving it away for free? What? I'm guessing from your silence, you did not know that. <laughs> Um, in a fascinating interview with Game Industry International, Oddworld creator and industry veteran Lorne Lanning revealed that Microsoft considering offering the original Xbox for free back in 2001. Have got it away, Dan. <laughs> we Sorry, paid what? for that. <laughs> what? Why? Um, the move uh, was an attempt to reach casual gamers, which he claimed Microsoft saw, at least during one stage of development, as a key demographic for the console. Quote, at the time, Xbox thought that the core market was going to be casual. They were going to be the casual gamers machine. Now, that's why they approached us, because they said, we think you've got something that competes in that Mario space, and we think Mario is the thing to kill. We see that space, we want the audience. We love Oddworld, so why don't you get on this bandwagon, and we might give the box away. Give it away? Yep. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's not all, Dan. <laughs> In the early days of Xbox, especially before we'd figured out how to get greenlit for the project as a pure gaming console, everybody and their brother who saw the new project started to, started to try and come in and say it should be free. They say it should be forced to run Windows after some period of time. And other ideas... Are you ready for this, Dan? I'm bracing. My, Microsoft should buy Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they've ever or will ever have enough money to do that. No. <laughs> Especially given at that point, they were still going pretty strong. Yeah, and one of their ideas was to make consoles that you know is a huge cost to them, development and everything, and then give it away. Yeah, especially as the Xbox was pretty expensive. Yeah, I, I can't remember how much I got mine for, but it was still at least three hundred quid at the time. Uh, yeah, I I got mine about a year and a half, maybe two years after. And I think I paid about three fifty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think. Um, and you had you had the original Duke. I, I did, did, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't know how. Um, I don't know how long it was after its release until I got it. But it's mainly for the fact that everyone else had PS 2s and I was just like, no, I want something different. Um, you so stuff. yeah, I just I took a risk <laughs> on it, and it just turned out to be great. So I, I didn't really care. Mm. Um, but yeah, if they'd offered that for free, I would have fucking shit myself and gone for it. Oh yeah, because you'd have bought a PS2. <laughs> no, I probably still wouldn't have. Yeah, really? I've got no interest in it. Oh man, I loved my PS2. Well, to be fair, I still stand by. I genuinely think the maybe second to the N64 or, or joint first, the original Xbox is probably my fir- my favourite yeah, console. Yeah, I don't know. There was just I so- loved it. There was just so much new about it, you know, like obviously it launched Mm. like Halo and, um, you know, a bunch of other games as well, you know, um, initial IPs and stuff. And it's just sort of, I don't know, it's just sort of become a bit fat and lazy now in that sort of Nintendo way where they have to say, we don't really need to come up with anything new because we know that if we can just, we can just relaunch Gears of War, we can just relaunch Forza or Halo and people will just buy it. And all the and all the decent good games we make, we're going to push yeah. back <laughs> to make space for the yeah, old we're just games. Just milking still. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's not a good. I mean, to be fair, Sony Sony do it a lot with like obviously you got like Uncharted etc. But they do they do take a plunge with new IPs a lot more so than a lot of other competitors. Um, I mean, like you say, Nintendo for like what thirty plus years, they've just been spawning out Mario and Zelda yeah. and stuff. And granted. You only really get one game of the se- of like that series, and it's not even every year. It's usually every few years. You'll get a proper new Mario game and a proper new Zelda game. But between that, you've got like Mario Karts and Mario Parties uh, and stuff like that. So even even though there is a big break between the the, the official games, they're still churning out games that they know are going to sell. Yeah. It, like DS and 3DS, you know, they'll they'll just get as many spin-offs yeah. as they possibly can out of it. I mean, look at Pokemon for Jesus exactly. Christ's sake. I can't even keep track of now. I really, I mean, I love Pokemon, but I think it's got to come to a point now where they they go, 
we're going to have to make a console version because there's all just the fucking same. Well, <laughs> well, the thing that is that can be said of pretty much any Nintendo game, though, can't it? Once it's done and it's established, no, they, granted. They, they'll just rehash it and just re- repeat the same thing again and again and again. I mean, I'd, I'd still, I still stand by. I'd rather have a new Mario game than a new Call of Duty because they, they at least do something different. It's still a platformer game, but they, they, I mean, like Mario Sunshine, you had like the the uh, water pack on your back and stuff, and that gave you new moves and new attacks, etc. And you had different means of completing objectives, but it was still a, a familiar Mario game, and that's what made it good. Whereas Call of Duty, it's it's Call of Duty, but now we're in the jungle. Yeah, now you can jump higher. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's it needs to change. And I think Advanced Warfare has gone down a better route than previous games were. It's I don't know. There was just something. I don't know. I there. think just since Modern Warfare Two, they've all just sort of gone downhill. Like they're, they're just getting to the realms yeah. of bizarre. You know, like what things are and how they think the world may have run. And you know, and then zombies. But, you know, people go fucking ape shit for that. I still don't understand why. If I want to kill zombies, I'll play I agree. Daisy. I, that, I think that's a much better um, sort of um, theatre to have it in. It's just yeah. like, no, it, you know, if you want to have zombies in an interesting way, Walking Dead, you can watch that. You want to play it, play Daisy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the closest to Call of Duty Zombies I'll, I will openly play is Sniper Elite Zombies. Well, I've. I've... And even that it isn't. No, it's not. Um, but it's it's still fun, you know. It's it is, but it's it's fun when like like when yeah. we play it. It's fun. I, I won't. Say I, I have many times, but I mean, no. no but <laughs> I mean, it's it's still it's it's just something to pass the time, really, until I die, yeah. rather than being very interested. <laughs> but you know, I, I've played uh, the new zombies on um, Advanced Warfare, and it is it's you know it's just standard horde mode. That's that's all it is. I mean, yeah. it's it's fine, and it's you know it can be a bit tense and stuff when you're getting swarmed and stuff. But at the end of the day, it's it's not enough, it's not something new that they've come up with. You know, they haven't gone back and said how can we? You know, people like zombies. They like this thing. How can we make zombies better? How can we, you know what what new can we bring to it? And we could put some in wheelchairs and stuff. I don't know. I mean, you know, maybe have like craftable turrets and stuff like that. You know, where you you can all. Just make. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what would just make it infinitely better straight away. A bigger map. You make a massive map. Yeah. And you can have. You, like yeah. You start size. off with ten zombies. Fair enough. You know, work your way through the waves. When you get to about wave fifteen, then you're getting a sweat on because you're just like shit. They they yeah. are absolutely everywhere. And you know, we need helicopters. You know, we need crazy amounts of missiles and stuff like that. That would make it interesting. So basically, we need battlefield zombies. Can you imagine? That? <laughs> I'd probably play I, that. I to be honest. If they offered that, it's like because it, I mean they've got a bunch of DLC that I'm not interested in. You know, it's a new pack. Woo. But if yeah. they said battlefield zombies, they just said we're just going to give it. People want it. Fuck it. We'll just do it. You know. To be fair, even, even if they did it with hardline, so it'd be like you're the police, and like the city's just gone to shit because of yeah, the zombies. It'd be a sort of, there you go. Yeah. There's your story. Yeah, it Done. would literally be that. You just get the same map, <laughs> rough it up a bit, blow some buildings up, have everything on fire, and then there's just you and 32 people. Imagine that! 32 people map zombies, yeah. rather than four. Or, or half of you are the zombies. Oh, now you're talking. See, that already, that's a game I'd... I'd yeah, I'd definitely get that. Yeah, I think I'd buy it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, this, um, with the, the Advanced Warfare thing, the only interesting thing I can actually um, I can sort of say yeah that was pretty good is is the the four characters that you can actually play as in the zombie map Um, there's what's his name from but it it was essentially just left for dead well that's it I mean they just got famous people in they know that they could put a face to and people go oh it's you know Shane Mm. from The Walking Dead oh brilliant Um, but then that's it as soon as you realised or there's the the guy from Aliens you know goes game over man like Hudson or whatever his name is, yeah. And you know, if he gets killed or whatever, gets taken down, he starts lying on the floor, going, "It's game over," and he just like, huh, "Oh, reference." And then that's it. That's worn off immediately. Yeah, and you forget and, about then, it. Then he just does it every time, <laughs> and you're just like, "All right, shut up now, fuck's sake." Or you want? Why not put that put that money into cheaper voice actors and more content? <laughs> just get the same voice actor. I don't fucking care. 
<laughs> it doesn't matter. For sake. <laughs> I'm not playing it yeah. to listen to the people. I'm playing it to kill some zombies. And I don't I don't no. want to do it that way. If I want to do it that way, I would play Left 4 Dead. Yeah, well, that, that is the thing. I mean, they, as far as I'm concerned, for sort of zombie four-player co-op, they've got the market. As soon as they do Left 4 Dead 3... Yeah. It would be between them and Sniper. No, I don't. I don't even think Sniper comes close. I think Sniper was just um, cashing in on the whole zombie craze. Oh no, definitely. And Left 4 Dead is a far yeah, superior. Yeah, but game. I mean, at least you know they they, they made it's fun. new. You know, they're basically standalone games. They're not very long at all. But you know, they just made them new games, but with the same game mechanics. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. they've at least. I'd, I'd say they put more effort in than they do with uh, Call of Duty Zombies. Oh, well, yeah, because like everything's like aesthetics and stuff like like say if there's some fire and that, um, there's countless different enemies. Um, Hitler's yeah. in it for fuck's sake. So unless they unless there's a Kevin Spacey, I don't know. There's some pretty creepy shit in those. <laughs> Remember when we were like going through that bunker or something? Then there's just like your own characters just sort of like like hung up. Oh, yeah, and just, like, that was what quite the spooky. Fuck is going actually. on here. Yeah, and they were yeah, just like you'd shoot them and then you'd get killed. And you were like, weird. what? What is going on? <laughs> I did, I did, yeah, but that, I but that's the thing. That, that was actually. interesting. That was an interesting element to it. It wasn't just run around shoot mm. zombies. It was, you know, there was, although it wasn't particularly well fleshed out, there was a story there. You know, you're progressing through the yeah. games to get to the end general or whatever. Yeah, it was fun at the end of the day. And I think whether it's my disdain for Call of Duty that stops it being fun, or the fact that it is just genuinely I don't know, not I mean, I've got, good. you know, I, I try not to be biased, I, I tend not to just, you know, say, oh, I'm not going to buy that because it's such and such. Um, it's, it's, you know, I'll give it a go, and if it's awful, that's it, I won't touch it. And it, you know, it will tarnish mm. the, the, you know, any future releases under the same title by the same guys. But, you know, I'll still give whatever they do new a chance. Yeah, but yeah, every time the, the, it's just that the more and more I play it, like because I mean I played, um, uh, you know they did a, a free Steam weekend for Advanced Warfare, and I, you know I played the shit yeah. out of that for about six or seven hours, and I just thought after six or seven hours and it's still annoying me, I, you know, and then I gave the zombies a go, I gave Infected a go, and it's, there's just nothing particularly interesting about it. It's just it's. Something Microsoft tried to tap into with the original Xbox, or so it seems, with the casual market. Call of well, Duty. That's it. Sells. I think it is a casual gamer seller. They can go and get they can get one Call of Duty a year, one FIFA a year, one racing game a year, and then like that that'll be it. That yeah. that'll do them until the next one comes out. I know a lot of people that have bought Xbox Ones just for Call of Duty because their friends have got Xbox Ones. Who only bought them because they had an Xbox 360, and and it's like that's not a valid no. reason to buy a console. If if that's not what you want to buy, then don't buy it. And like yeah, but I only played Call of, Call of Duty and FIFA. So like, well, <laughs> fuck off then. <laughs> <laughs> Stop taking up my fucking <laughs> air. <laughs> There's so many good games out. I'm not 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 saying go buy PS4, but. If you're going to buy an Xbox One, at least give something like Sunset Overdrive a chance. Because yeah. if people just buy Call of Duty and they just buy FIFA and even Battlefield and stuff, they're not going to make new games. Yeah, I bet you this is perfect warning to everyone out there. If, yeah, if you carry on buying these games only, they'll stop making anything new and interesting. Yeah. I'm not saying don't because buy it all together, but buy other games. Yeah, uh, you know, widen your variety a little bit. Yeah. If everyone stopped buying Call of Duty today, Call of Duty would be dead in a year. Yeah. And they go, shit, we, we've got to come up with something new. Yeah. And it wouldn't be just a different type of Call of Duty. They'd have to think of something brand new to get people interested, to get people in, and to buy it. Yeah. That, that not been done before. That's why we try and look out for, for new developers and stuff, because we want to keep, keep an eye on, you know, what the little guys are going to have to do. In order to compete with people who, you know, just sort of churn out the same thing again and again and again, and they've got to make such a—it's things like, um, you know, like space uh, space engineers, yeah, and stuff like that. It's it's still, you know, basically just Minecraft in space, really. Essentially, but, yeah, but it's, that, but it's because that's it's selling interesting. It short, it's, though. 
well, I mean, it's I, I love it. I absolutely love yeah. it. I mean, I've already put about 160 hours into it, and I, you know, we, we've barely accomplished anything. And there's so much community content on there. It's ridiculous. I trawl through it for half an hour in a go, yeah. and I might just see one thing, and I just think, ooh, new shapes of windows. Cool, I'll have that. But, and I mean, then you just you play on. But people have made like they've made like a fully working like uh, like the bat from the Dark Knight Rises. People have made like Optimus Prime and stuff that he, he actually moves. It does fuck all, but you can get in it and move. Yeah. And that must have taken fucking months to make. Yeah. I mean, you know, people go and make you know Battlestar Galactica. The you know the oh shit, I forgot what it's called now. Um, Oh, Galactica. <laughs> what a dickhead. I'll be honest, I had no idea. So. No, there's, there's like 11 battle stars and like one survived and it's Galactica. But like, you oh. know, people have made that. They've made the Millennium Falcon. They've made the Death Star, Star Destroyers, the Enterprise, multiple versions mm. of it. You, you know, and you, can, you can't do anything with it in your game, but you can just go on and you can just have a wonder around in it. And yeah. just be like, how, how did you do this? This is amazing. You know, that's that's when people get involved in games. It and took those us hours ones to pick a cock. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good one, though. It was until it went missing. <laughs> I found it. Now it's gone, though. <laughs> oh yeah, now it's pretty much permanently gone. <laughs> but still, but that's but we still made it. Yeah, and exactly. Like everything on. Um, I mean, granted, you, you've brought it back again for like for the base and stuff like Dan's currently. Um, doing like a massive overhaul on a new base, new ships and stuff. But but the one we had before, everything had a purpose and everything worked. And really meticulous little things that oh well if we if we fly the ship in this way, we're going to need to have like a like a the parking reactor thing, whatever it is, like the magnet, whatever it's called. I can't think. Anyway, um, like Dan thought of every little thing that it, we should have, so we built it. Because he could, <laughs> and yeah. you can't do that on Call of Duty. Well, it's not just <laughs> Call of Duty, but you know, I mean, I, I, although I like sort of games that are quite, you know, A to B, and then that's it, level over. Those are fine, you, you know, providing that they're again interesting. Um, but for me, the the future is these sort of big sandbox community generated. Mm. Well, again, look at Minecraft. Minecraft is the perfect example, and. Microsoft, although they spent a ridiculous amount of money on it, they 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 knew what they were getting into, and they they knew that they could push it on the 360, and they could just shower people with DLC. Yeah. The fact that people have to pay for it that annoys me. I mean, if you want to if you want to buy the game outright, and it costs more than it does on the PC, fair enough. But the the, the mods, all the, the the skins and stuff like that, don't charge people for that. Are you fucking kidding me? It's my, free online. My nephew loves Minecraft, and he's six. And he hadn't got the game. His friend had got it, and he'd play it at his friend's house and stuff. And when he'd get home, he'd watch videos on YouTube and stuff. Um, and my sister had to sit there and watch. He'd find a video he wanted to watch, and she'd say, right, go, and, go and play in the living room or something, whatever. I'm going to make sure there's no swearing. Um, and my sister, she's done it at home and where she's working and stuff. She's like trawled through YouTube channels, um, and she's found this this guy who's actually from the UK, um, and he just talks about Minecraft. He doesn't swear or anything, so he's allowed to watch that. Yeah. And my sister um, texts me and said, like, do you know anywhere I can get Minecraft for for PlayStation Three for cheap? And I was like, no, get it on PC. <laughs> she's like, yeah. Why? I was like, because it's better on it's it's cheaper on PC. Um, a PC will run it, and you get like all content for free. Yeah. And she's like, oh, all right. And I've sent her a link. Um, I've sent her. I mean, she's watched our stuff on a, on YouTube, so she's like seeing all the different mods and stuff. Um, and then I saw him at the weekend, and he's like, I got Minecraft for PlayStation Three. And I've just like scowled at her. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any idea how much he's going to cost you in the long run? Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, to be fair, he's just going to fucking... He's going to build, like, a house and stuff. <laughs> he's sick, well, he's th- there's, it, it, there's an almost identical situation with someone I work with. Um, you know, her son, I think he, her son's about seven. Um, and he, he's bonkers for it. Um, you know when I bought you the, the Blockopedia? Yeah. Um, she bought that for her son and showed me. And I was just like, that's amazing. I'm going to buy that for Callum. <laughs> um, Thanks for putting me in the scene. <laughs> 
same <laughs> stature as a seven-year-old. Uh, well, well, you know, um, she, um, she, you know, she was telling me about you know what he likes to do, and you know he watches videos and stuff like that as well. And I was just like, all oh, right, you know, we make them. And she's like, oh, we'll have to put. And I was just like, no, don't, don't show him any of ours. Yeah. For God's sake, don't. I don't know why though. I, I just had an image there of like her talking about her son and stuff, saying, "I love Minecraft stuff," and you're like, "Oh, says Gallup, he loves Batman, he loves Minecraft, and the like, X Men stuff." She's like, How old is he? And he's 28. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get him together and have a little play. <laughs> How old is he? Uh, 20. Uh, yeah, uh, six, I think. Uh, but you, you know, but he came into work once, um, and she, you know, she brought him over, and she was like, "Oh, this is Dan. You know, he likes Minecraft as well." And I was just like, "Oh yeah, yeah, you, you know, I." Fixed your lap. Well, she brought a laptop in to try and um, so he could try and run Minecraft. I was telling him about all the mods and stuff, and they're all for free. But the laptop just can't handle it. So I was talking to him about it, and he was just like, "Oh, um, yeah, yeah I, I did this thing where I had um, uh, I, he, he got a squid and he made it fly." I was like, <laughs> "What? How the hell? How did you do that?" I was just like, "Jesus Christ! This fucking seven-year-old is telling me how to play Minecraft." I was like, "Right, here's my pad and paper. Right, what did you do? What, what was the code?" What, <laughs> What were you doing there? <laughs> it turns out he wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't even but, playing Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, but this is. The, but that's the thing. Like that's where people can come in and just say, "I've got a brilliant idea. I can make this, this, and this, and then I can stick these things that someone else has made, and I can make this working robot, and it'll yeah. walk around." And people are just like, "That's amazing." Hmm. So user con- uh, user generated content, I think. If you want to implement it into other games, like in the, in the sort of way that you know GTA Four has been picked up, but that's just been sort of picked apart by people rather than yeah, that's a bit different. offering it out. But you know, so it's something that EA caught on with the Sims. So you know, Sims Four has user generated content, and you can yeah. put in things that other people have made. Maxis do it all the time with. Um, I don't. Th- I don't know. Did Maxis actually have anything to do with the Sims Four? Uh, yeah, no, yeah, they still made it in that. Oh, right, okay. B- because of mods and stuff on old Sims titles, um, that's why they made the user-generated area for people to go, look yeah, what we've done. It's the same thing with Spore. Like, mm. Spore was just all about the user... Like, the, the whole game was pretty much fashioned around what other people have built, their planets, their... All the, the creatures that they make, they now populate your universe. All that sort of thing. I, I absolutely love that. And I, I, I want to see more of stuff like that. You know, well, I want to see the daisies where people bring in their own stuff. I want to see games that are inspired by things that people have just made on their own, like that yeah. um, Bioshock video. People see yeah. that and go, that's brilliant. I'll make that. That would be amazing. I mean, I, I know you're going to get angry for me bringing it up, but Disney Infinity oh, right, has... Oh, okay. Let me know, I know. <laughs> but that has a user-generated area yeah. where... There's like shitloads of content. Like people have like recreated, like the you know the Tron remake. Where you got like the race part oh, and yeah, like yeah. where where they're fighting in that. They've remade that entire bit, and um, there's like Aladdin stuff that people, like people have made. Like the way it plays out, it's like scenes from the film. No way. Um, it's really really well done, um, but it's like really in depth. The toy the toy box mode, like where you create your own games and stuff. Yeah. It's it's stupidly in depth for a kids game. It's ridiculous, <laughs> honestly. It's there's so much stuff there, but because it is a kids game, unless there's a lot more people like me playing it, which obviously there is, <laughs> um, it's not going to feel the full effect of something like Minecraft or Space Engineers, yeah. where people are going to make it, put it up there, but no one's going to see it because it's being played by kids. Yeah, I I, I think you're right. Um, I mean, Minecraft can obviously you can pick up Minecraft on your phone. And it's basically yeah. the same game as getting it for the PC. But the fact is that you won't have all the textures available. You won't have the infinite amount of mods that there are. And I, I, I don't think that it is targeted at kids anymore. I really don't. I mean, that, no. you know, it's simple, it's buildy, you know, it's creative. And, you know, give someone vanilla Minecraft when they're five and just let them crack on with it and see and you'll go I guarantee you you go back to them in two weeks and say what have you done and they would have done something you wouldn't have even thought of yeah they're just like oh, that's brilliant well, how did you even do that that's amazing so you know it's, it's giving things uh, sorry it's giving people something to think about that's what I want from games I want you know when it's like a, a story like you know Uncharted Fahrenheit stuff like that you know and you've really got to wrap your head around it and go how am I going to get through this or you know mm. what the hell is going on so stuff that actually makes you think, rather than just go pull the trigger, pull the trigger, pull the trigger, yeah. pull the trigger. 
And you know, I mean, that... there's, there's always going to be a place for those games where you just. I, I want to play some, but I can't be asked to get it like yeah, too into wanna... story and that. I do that on Battlefield all the time. If mm. I'm just watching some on YouTube, or I'm just sort of half-mindedly, I, I will just have YouTube on the one screen. I'll be watching, you know, whatever, and on the other will be Battlefield. I'll just be running around, yeah. just getting shot lots, and that's fine just for passing the time. But you know, when I want to sit down and go, right, I need to do something. You know, I need to keep my brain active. Space engineers straight away. Right, yeah. what mods have we got? How can I implement this into the base? What could I do? Ah, right, okay, so we can make this thing. Right, okay, that's a good idea. Ah, I need more resources. Blah. And then that's it, eight hours later. And I'm just like, shit, I'm still on this. What the hell? I need to leave. <laughs> it's fucking work. <laughs> well, I mean, even stuff like Far Cry, though, they are so much better first-person shooters than yeah. the likes of Call of Duty. And personally, even Battlefield. I love Far Cry. Yeah, it is amazing. But, I mean, there's so much more so than good. just running around shooting people. Yeah, a lot more. I mean, like I have. I mean, I got it um, last. Obviously, I got it last year, and I'm still just like liberating bell towers and stuff, just yeah. so I can unlock like new weapons. I found out there's a fucking crossbow, so I want that. <laughs> but um, so I'm just doing stuff like that. I've hardly touched the story. Yeah, and that's totally unlike me. I, I normally get the story done, and then if it's still a good game, I'll, I'll do the rest of the stuff. See, that but is. I just. Fo- Sorry, go on. Go on. No, I was just going to say, but this time I've, I've, I've actually sat there and gone, I really want to explore and just unlock stuff. Yeah, but that's worth 45 quid. Oh, yeah, definitely. Whereas, definitely. you know, the next version of shootemintheface.com, <laughs> 45 quid. Well, that's another thing, though. No, not really. If they, ch- if they charge, like, say, 25 quid, I'd be a bit more lenient towards it. All right, it's a rehash, but, you know, it's it's... Like half price of a full retail game, so well, that's, that's not too bad. The thing is, I, I can understand why they charge as much as they do, it's because they know people will buy it. But yeah, that's why. If they if they charged you 45, 40 quid for it, um, and they said it's forty five quid, it's basically the same game that we've made for the last ten years. However, all the maps and stuff we make, all the zombies, all the extra stuff, that's free, buddy. That's yeah. all included because we know that you know we're not giving you enough for the money you're paying for it in the first place I'd say you know what Call of Duty bloody well done Treyarch Activision well done that's a good you know saying we're not as good as other games that are charging 45 quid so uh, you know to offset that we're going to give you free content out of it that's not going to happen though <laughs> of course it's not it's because they know that they can milk it and they can just throw in one extra character and like, charge this Call of Duty is the best Call of Duty that has ever been but it's the same <laughs> So it's no, no, it's not going to work. Goldeneye like is say, still better. It's still people. It's like unanimous decision that everyone loves Goldeneye. I have spent the last week excited to sit and play Goldeneye. Yeah, and it's it shouldn't <laughs> should not be. <laughs> I've I've got all the next gen consoles. I've got a decent PC. And I just want to play Golden. <laughs> I know, right? But that's it. That's the mark of something that's worth spending money on. Yeah. I'd love if they if they did this as a full release, as it is, as we've been playing it. Uh, I don't know if, if you've watched our our um, Golden Eye Souls video. If you haven't, www.youtube.com forward slash podcast versus player. Um, it's just like the best fun, and even though it's like completely changed. It's exactly the same. It is as it was all those years ago. It's amazing. It is, but it's better. Like, it is like going back in time to seeing it how you saw it when you were a kid yeah. playing it. That's how yeah. good it looked. Well, it doesn't it's look. Ma- it doesn't look amazing. Don't granted, it, it does look amazing compared. But that's it comparatively. It but you compare it to yeah. that Crisis video. Uh, sorry, the um, Bioshock. Bioshock thing running on the Cry Engine. Yeah, yeah, it looks awful. But comparatively, it's fine. I'd still, I'd still rather play Goldeneye. <laughs> Golden Eye all day. I really, really would. Um, anyway, speaking of the channel, do you know what is coming up on the channel, Mr. Um, Miyagi? We've got some more Bond stuff. We so have. there's going to be some more Everything or Nothing. Obviously, some more Golden Eye as well because it's great. Yep. Um, Space Engineers. I'd say we've got pretty. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy to let you come in now and Ooh, mess everything you. up. <laughs> Um, other than that, though, I still haven't even got around to looking at Minecraft yet. Uh, we've still got Marvel Heroes that we haven't done. We've also yeah. got Star Wars that we haven't done. Um, Dirty I wanna, shorts. 
Oh, of course, plenty of dirty shorts. We're going to have some more Talk to Dan. We're going to have some mm. more. Callum, we've got plenty of content. What the hell's going on? We, have, we are actually on a position where we're not actually behind, but yeah. we're on target and we have things planned. Yes, we've got stuff to do. Something um, also, awful has happened. You, um, get Nozgoff. No. Idiot, get it immediately. We'll do some on that as well. Um, I actually spent some day, I can't remember what it was, last week, um, and I went on Steam and I saw it and I went, oh, that's what Dan told me to get. <laughs> and then I literally closed Steam down. <laughs> you also need to get a Star Trek as well. I've got we Star need to get Trek. To that. Oh, have you? Brilliant. I've well, had Star Trek for ages. We need to update it, you need to update uh, Star Wars, you need to update DC Online, all the MMOs, get them all up to date and we'll we'll crack on with them at some point. That seems like a stellar plan, sir. Yes. Do you have anything you would like to add before we end this week's transmission? Yes, um, I will be with Callum um, at some point sexually. next week. But in both sexually and gamerly <laughs> matters. <laughs> Made up a word, it's fine. It's fine. It's good. Yeah, um, so we'll try and do some, I don't know, Gang Beasts, uh, mm. some Super Smash Brothers, some, just all the multiplayer goodness, we'll just get it all out. Everything there. we can get done, we Absolutely. will get done, and we will condense it into a small box, we'll fill it with glitter, we will smear custard around the lid, and we will just enjoy this terrific trifle we've created. Absolutely. And I'm you looking probably forward won't. to it. I am, I'm looking forward to it. On that note, though... Say goodbye, you sexy shenaniganizer. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs>